I want to talk to you about something that is, has come out in science. There's this quantum uh, mechanics and there's quantum physics that has to do with entanglement. So I looked up and Einstein said, oh, that, entangle, that entanglement stuff, he goes, it's spooky. Okay, I think, okay, if, if Einstein is saying it's spooky, I want to know more. Y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> Are you really excited? Are you really? Because okay. I, I, like, I rode like a tightrope walk for the last two weeks of Revelation to, to be here and, and deliver this to you. It's such a tightrope. It was a literally, I walked this place that I told Kathy I have never been at before in my life. But I say that every day. But I'm telling you, God is doing something so amazing. And he told me, he said, my people aren't picking up on it. He said, I'm about, I'm about to do a miracle. You know, I'm about to do a miracle every day. And he, he you know, you're, you wait till tomorrow night. The sermon tomorrow night is Jesus. And it's Jesus. He is the sheriff of our faith. He's our commander of our faith. That's the message tomorrow night. Jesus, the commander. The word in Greek is champion. He's the champion of our faith. And you know, and I had finished, I had finished 40 courses that are coming out the rest of the year. And uh, I was sitting in my chair and the one I'm going to preach tonight is the one I had just finished. And he said, I want you to go over. I want you to talk about that I'm the, I'm the commander of, of, of your faith. And he said, I said, well, what, how, how do you want me to go at it? He said, go over to the studio and brag about me for four hours. And so that's what I did. I literally bragged about Jesus. It took 10 sessions. And when I was done, I thought, you know what? If I never do another thing, I'm doing fine. So how's that that you do 40 courses for y'all already in the, in the queue? They're already done. And God tells me to do tonight's message there. So I did, I did 10 sessions for that. I sit in my chair and he goes, oh, not so fast. <laughs> Daniel's son, you know. I thought, well, okay, what, what's going on, Lord? He said, he said, I'm the champion. I'm the commander of your faith. He said, I started, you tell the people I'm going to finish it. He said, what I've started, I'm going to finish. I thought, that's going to preach. He goes, exactly. <laughs> so I get back over to the studio. So I, I turned the lights on and I did that. And something has happened to me. When I realized what God is tying all this together with. So you, you, you think about... City, sitting at the White House and planning the next four years out. And then you have the prayer app and they said, okay, we're going to give you prayer points. Wow. We can put them on, we can put, because I said, I want to put, can I put them on my prayer app? So we have fresh things every day on what's really going on before it happens. And I said, can I have the names of every cabinet member, pictures? Can I have all the, all the staff? And we're going to pray for them. And then I said, I, I, I asked them, I said, will you come and speak at our spirit schools? They said, yes. And I thought, you know, like, you know what's happening is not only are we getting our country back, but we're going to keep it. Now, when I say keep it, I mean put it back to 1776 and then Mayflower, Compact, like back to the original intent, which is in God we trust. All right, so all of us are part of this, but all of us don't see that. So tonight I want to talk to you about something that um, I'm going to give, give you an offer that you can't refuse tonight. God, God has done something. You don't even know how strong this, this bond between you and God is. Okay, so when I was teaching on the commander of our faith, I got halfway through. I don't know why you still are in your seats. I'd be running around right now. 
I am holding on to this for dear life. I was halfway through. I had five sessions done. I had five more to go. So I got like two hours left. I went like this and I started session five or six, whatever it was. And when I turned and I said something, you know, I wasn't looking at my notes yet. And when I said it, I remembered that I had had this dream of this sitting at that table, saying that very thing, looking at the back wall 15 years ago. And I said, what in the world was that? When I, when I was on the road with Southwest Airlines, I had this dream of, of, of that very episode. Wow. Wow. I knew what I was going to say next. And I knew that this course was going to be off the charts because I bragged about Jesus for t- about four hours. I gave him all the glory that he deserves, right? Maybe the ministers start doing that too, you know? I mean, really giving him glory for it, right? Like all of us want, right? All of us want to hear about Jesus. And I realized, are you ready? I told, I told the mentor students today, I said, I realized that for the last 15 years, I've worried for nothing. <laughs> because I ended up where I was supposed to be without even trying. Did you th- ever think about this? Now, all of you have had that happen. I don't know probably anybody in here hasn't had deja vu. But see, deja vu is at the certain time you lock right into your destiny and your spirit locks up with the fact that you saw this before and you knew, I've been here before, I've done this, but you hadn't, but you were in the spirit, right? See, you could have said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I had deja vu. Listen, is this, too, is this, this is not out of the ordinary. The last four years is out of the ordinary. This is ordinary. Listen, your tax dollars paid for weirdness for the last four years. So now how about you keeping your money and having a good time in church? Why not? Listen, listen, people... People that think you're crazy are really the crazy ones. They've proved it. You know, it's really, only the fool says there is no God. Have you ever felt that the church needs a little more upper lip, maybe a little backbone? I mean, she's the bride. She can't have too much testosterone. But I mean, can we have something like as a little bit of confidence, a little bit of, you know, I believe. I remember, I remember when I was at the Assemblies of God College and the professor, he was the, one, of the, one of the original. And he said, yeah, he says, I miss the Assemblies of God in the old days when we believe God for everything. I go, oh my gosh, I, you know, I just, I just gotten saved. I thought, man, there's the back door. I better get out now. I mean, if they're talking about, they're talking like that, maybe I'm in the wrong place, right? He said, I remember when we were taught to believe God and we didn't, we bit down in prayer and we didn't let go until we got what we, we believed for. And this is what he said. He said, the, uh, the superintendent of the assemblies of God, good man, he said he was in, on his deathbed. They had given him so many days to live and he uh, had these uh, elders and this guy was one of them around him and they were kind of talking about the arrangements and who's going to take his place and all this and this professor he said you know what what are we doing how do you think this whole movement was started it was started in Azusa Street and we met in uh, Hot Springs Arkansas now it's like lukewarm springs you know He said, this is what he said. He said, if we don't get a hold of God right now, we're going to lose a good man. And all those men stopped flapping their jaws, held hands, and agreed with God. And that man jumped out of bed healed of cancer. Okay. It wasn't that guy's faith. It wasn't any of those other guys' faith. It was one man that remembered 
who he was connected to. And that the whole movement was connected to a move of God. And what happened was, through hard times, we start to reattach to our roots because we realize things are not working out. And the, the people of Israel, they, they had 40 years. I would have taken 40 minutes, but they took 40 years and they never got it, right? They're God's people. God said they're his people. He had connected with them, right? He said, I'm going to write my name on you. My name's going to be in you, on you. He said, all the nations are going to know that I'm your God. He said, he said if you obey me and love me, he says, I'm going to make you a deal. He said, the enemy's going to come at you and they're going to have to flee in seven ways. He said, everybody's going to give you money, but you're, you're, going to, you're, you're never going to have to borrow. You're going to have all the money, right? 